Hello, I'm Daniela, and this is episode 11 of Historical Paranormal. In this episode, we'll explore one of modern folktales' infamous cryptids, the Sasquatch. Legends of the Sasquatch throughout modern history are hard to pinpoint. Sasquatches have many names. Bigfoot, Yeti in the Himalayas, Yowie in Australia, Skunk, Ape, or Yaley. The term Sasquatch comes from the Halcomelum word Sasquet. Ets, which is just a name for wild men, essentially referring to Bigfoot-like creatures. Halcomelum was a language spoken by a small group of Native Americans on the border between British Columbia and Washington. This creature has been viewed as benevolent or malevolent depending on the tribe and culture. The Sasquatch is a forest spirit and is often believed to exist in the northwestern Pacific region of the United States and western Canada. It seems to represent the North American counterpart of the Himalayan region's mythical monster, the Abominable Snowman. Some Bigfoot advocates hypothesize that the primate is the the offspring of an ape from Asia that wandered to North America during the Ice Age. They believe there is at least 2,000 ape men walking upright in North America's woods today. The Sasquatch's appearance is described as a primate ranging from 6 to 15 feet tall and is said to be covered in auburn colored hair, although reports of brown, black, and even white and silver hair do occasionally pop up. This creature often weighs between 600 to 900 pounds, stands erect on two feet, often gives off a foul smell, moves silently, and emits a high-pitched cry. The creature is described as nocturnal and behaving shy, and is less active during cold weather. Its diet consists of mostly berries and fruits, and footprints that have been found and linked to the creature have measured up to 24 inches in length and 8 inches in width. Some say that Sasquatches may take things that do not belong to them or even kidnap a human wife, but do not harm people and may even come to their aid. Sometimes Bigfoot is considered a guardian of nature in these tribes. Some see the big see the Sasquatch as a loner or traveling in a small family unit that may exchange gifts or use sign language to communicate. Other Bigfoot legends describe these creatures as attacking humans, playing dangerous tricks, stealing children, and may even behave like cannibals. These more dangerous Bigfoot monsters known as stick Indians or bush Indians are sometimes found in large groups or even villages which engage in warfare with neighboring Indian tribes. Native American stories of wild men existed among Native Americans and the Pacific Northwest long before white colonists arrived. Versions of Bigfoot range from harmless giants who stole fish from fishermen's nets to cannibalistic monsters living on mountain peaks. One common region was Mount St. Helens, that these giant cannibalistic versions of Bigfoot were said to live. And in 1920, J.W. Burns compiled the local legends for a series for a Canadian newspaper coining the term Sasquatch in the process. Some other possible monsters that could be linked to Bigfoot are Kualain Mi, which comes from Yakama Indians of the Pacific Northwest, which was a devourer of people, and the Hoopa Indians called the man-like beast the Oma, a demon of the wilderness. The Nisqually tribe of western Washington had the Tisiko, which is described as a gigantic hairy beast, and the Tenatinatko, which was known by the Kaska. Their creatures were known to dig a hole in the ground as a place to sleep and would sometimes kidnap women and children. Most of the woodland giants in the lore of Native Americans seem to be more aggressive than the creatures we know as Bigfoot today. In 1934, author Diamond Jenness reported the Carrier First Nation told of a monster that left enormous footprints in the snow and had a face like a man and was very tall, covered in long hair, that hardly seemed to be a coincidence when compared to the modern descriptions of Bigfoot. Some accounts of Bigfoot from colonists include an 1811 sighting near what is now the town of Jasper in Alberta, Canada. A trader named David Thompson found some strange footprints 14 inches long and 8 inches wide with four toes in the snow. In 1884, the newspaper Daily colonist of Victoria, British Columbia, told of a capture of a Sasquatch. The creature was spotted by a train crew along the Fraser River. The crew stopped the train, gave chase, and captured the animal after following it up a rocky hill. The creature was given the name Jacko and was something of the gorilla type, standing on four feet seven inches in height and weighing 127 pounds. He was long, black, strong, hairy, and resembled a human being, with one exception, his entire body. His hands, or paws, and feet were covered in glossy hair, about one inch long. He possessed extraordinary strength, as he took hold of a stick and broke it by wrenching it or twisting it, 
which no man could break in the same way. The description of Jacko is so much like that of a chimpanzee, and so unlike later Bigfoot reports that some have suggested the animal actually was a chimpanzee, and some believe maybe this chimpanzee was brought from Africa. Newspapers of the era often printed hoax stories to amuse their readers, and rumors of the Sasquatch continued into the end of the century. In 1910, the murder of two miners found with their heads cut off was attributed to the creature, though there was little to support that the killing wasn't human in origin. In any case, the place of the murders, Nahani Valley in Canada, was changed to Headless Valley because of the incident. In 1901, there was an account of a Sasquatch encounter which appeared in the Daily British Colonist. In this story, a lumberman named Mike King stated that he was working alone on Vancouver Island near Campbell River because his Indian packers had refused to accompany him because of their fear of the monkey men they said lived in the forest. Late in the afternoon, he observed a man beast washing roots in the river. When the creature became aware of King, it cried out and ran up a nearby hill. King described it as being covered with reddish-brown hair, and his arms were peculiarly long and were used freely in climbing and brush running, while the trail showed a distinct human foot but with phenomenally long and sparing toes. In 1904, three years later on December 14th, the colonists again featured a Sasquatch story, this time from four credible witnesses who saw a man-like creature on Vancouver Island. In 1907, the newspaper told the abandonment of an Indian village due to the inhabitants being frightened away by a monkey-like wild man who appears on the beach at night, who howls in an unearthly fashion. In 1924, according to the Canadian lumberjack Albert Otsman, he had been prospecting near Tibet Inlet when he was captured by a family of Bigfoots. The father and daughter guarded him while the mother and son prepared the meals. The family was vegetarian and ate roots, grass, and spruce tips. After about a week, Otsman was able to slip away. He didn't tell his story to anyone until 1957, fearing people would think he was crazy. The second incident in 1924 involved a group of miners near Mount St. Helens, Washington. The story goes that the miners spotted a Bigfoot and shot at it, apparently killing the animal. That night, their cabin was surrounded by the creature's friends. They proceeded to throw stones at the building, pound on the walls, and climb on the roof. The attack continued till dawn. The next day, the miners packed up and abandoned the mine. The place is called Ape Canyon. The final sighting came also from the region of Mount St. Helens when a prospector complained to a forest ranger that he'd been woken up in the middle of the night when stones were thrown at his cabin. Peeking outside, he saw Sasquatches, and they were screaming like a bunch of apes. The man hid under his bed till morning came. Going outside, he found the cabin surrounded by footprints. In contemporary times, most people link Bigfoot's popularity to 1958 Humboldt Times story. Journalist Andrew Ginzoli highlighted a fun and dubious letter from a reader about loggers in Northern California who discovered mysteriously large prints. Maybe we have a relative to the abominable snowman of the Himalayas, Ginzoli jokingly wrote in his September 21st column alongside the letter. Later, Ginzoli said that he'd simply thought the mysterious footprints made a good Sunday morning story, but to his surprise, it really fascinated readers. In response to Ginzoli and fellow Humboldt Times journalist Betty Allen, published follow-up articles about the footprints reporting the name loggers had given to the so-called creature who had left the tracks, Bigfoot. And so a legend was born. Turns out the footprints were a hoax. After the death of the man, Ray Wallace, the brother of a man in charge of the construction site where the prints were found, his family stepped forward to say that he was responsible for faking the prints. Scoop Bill, the editor of Humboldt Times, is also said to have been involved. Nevertheless, the 1958 prints brought the first Bigfoot hunters to the area. In 1967, Rogers Patterson and Bob Gimlin, Bigfoot buffs, announced they'd captured Bigfoot with a movie camera. They filmed a few seconds of an ape-like creature, apparently female, moving across a clearing near Bluff Creek in Northern California. Believers in Bigfoot note the creature's inhumane way of walking is a major point toward the film being real. A number of factors led to skeptics believing it was a hoax. People who knew Patterson have described him, frankly, as a liar. Patterson's versions of the events, including an estimate of how tall Bigfoot was, also changed and escalated over time. More to the point, a man named Bob Hiromis claimed to have worn the Bigfoot costume for the making of the film. Most likely, and not too surprisingly, the film was a hoax. By the 1970s, pseudo-documentaries were investigating his existence and films were portraying him as a sexual predator. In the 1980s, 
Bigfoot showed his softer side, he became associated with environmentalism and a symbol of the wilderness that we need to preserve. One big example in 1987 was the movie Harry and the Hendersons, which portrayed Bigfoot as a friendly, misunderstood creature in need of protection from John Lithgow and his family. John Green is considered one of the leading researchers in the field, although he stopped cataloging new accounts of Bigfoot sightings. He was born in Canada in 1927. Green began investigating with Tom Slick, Rene DeHayden, and others during the early days of Bigfoot research. He wrote a number of books on the subject, including Years of the Sasquatch, On the Track of the Sasquatch, and Sasquatch. The Apes Among Us, he chronicled many famous cases, including Albert Otzman, reportedly has gathered more than 2,000 sightings and several hundred incidents of footprints. In 2008, Rick Dyer and Matthew Witten claimed to have solved the problem after they supposedly found a Bigfoot body, posting a video of it on YouTube. The body was nearly 8 feet tall and weighed over 500 pounds. Despite even some Bigfoot experts doubting the young men's story, the discovery was covered by CNN, ABC, Fox, and BBC News, and both received 50000 from Searching for Bigfoot, Inc. as a measure of good faith. However, when the body arrived in a block of ice that was thawed and examined, researchers found the body was made of rubber feet, fake hair, and a hollow head. Some have even come out to advocate on behalf of Bigfoot. Some local authorities have moved to protect him. In Skamania County, Washington, it is illegal to kill a Bigfoot under a penalty fine of $1,000 and five years in jail. The Sioux Indians who called Bigfoot Takuhi have forbidden hunting of him on their ground. While there are many stories of Bigfoot, skeptics have pointed to the idea that perhaps he is a descendant or a remnant of the Neanderthals. And this was recognized by Soviet scientist Boris Porchenev. However, most modern scientists do not recognize the creature's existence. Most see him as the creation of ape costumes and ghillie suits that are used in order to perpetuate the legend. Many hair samples that have been recovered from alleged Bigfoot encounters have turned out to be from elk, bear, or crows, while others think that many of these encounters are more so misidentified animals. In 2007, a photo was snapped in Pennsylvania using an automatically triggered camera hanging from a tree. While believers claim the blurry photo showing a large hairy creature standing on all fours was the juvenile Sasquatch, the Pennsylvania Game Commission said the creature was most likely a bear with an extreme case of mange. Looking at the picture, it could also just as easily have been a human in a suit. Some skeptics have asked these questions. For those who believe in Bigfoot, how are they able to maintain a stable breeding population? over a reasonably large area given all the supposed sightings and they must have very lengthy lives since there have been reports of them throughout time and why has a body never been recovered regardless of what you believe about sasquatches bigfoot or whatever you want to call this hairy ape-like creature it will continue to be a staple in modern folklore and a symbol of urban legends. Thank you for listening to episode 11 of Historical Paranormal. I hope that you enjoyed it. You can check out the previous episodes on the Historical Paranormal playlist, and if you're interested in more paranormal topics, you can check out my Urban Legends playlist on this channel or my main channel, Dazzling One.